Let's break down some stocks, guys, and go over charts I'm liking, stocks I'm looking at, and of course, what I'm looking to do in the market. So without further ado, let's not waste any time. If you all find value, hit that like button, make sure to subscribe and share this video with a friend, and feel free to get up to 17 stocks from Moomoo, link down below, but more on that later. And now, let's dive into the video. And by the way, if you guys want to see my market breakdown for today, which I'm not going to do a market breakdown in this video, we're going to talk more about individual stocks, but if you want to see my market breakdown, Go check out my previous video. We talk about the S&P, the NASDAQ. We break down those charts, and we go over gold, silver, oil. So go check out my previous video, of course, after you watch this video. And with that being said, let's dive into it. So Apple, I want to go over this, guys. We got some news out of Apple that they're looking to, and this is from Bloomberg, guys. This report is from Bloomberg. The tech behemoth, this is straight from the uh, the article, plans to spend $1 billion a year to produce movies that will, uh, will be released in movie theaters. You heard that right. In movie theaters, guys. And they've already approached movie studios about partnering on certain titles for releases this year and in the future. So they're already looking to partner with particular um, you know, movie studios at this point, which is awesome. And although plans are still being finalized, the company wants to air movies in thousands of theaters for at least one month. So I guess they're looking to do a trial run or something like that. Bucking their previous strategy strategy of streaming exclusives and limited box office releases. So the stock moved a little bit. I'm not, I mean, it's probably not on this news, guys. I mean, Apple is such a big company at the end of the day. This might not be enough to move the needle too much uh, in the short term, at least. Maybe long term, it's going to be, uh, be a big opportunity. But I figured that was a pretty interesting piece of news there. And the stock went up a little bit on the day, 0.7%. And if you all remember, I called this out a couple days ago, and it's been and it's, uh, it's been playing out pretty nicely, right? We have the inverse head and shoulders playing out here on Apple, and we have that wedge that I called out. We called the breakout out a couple days ago. You guys remember that? We have the wedge right here where we were stuck in it for quite some time, a couple of weeks. We broke right through it. Now we're at a multi-month high, believe it or not, on Apple. We haven't been in the 160s. I think earlier today we got above 160. Let me check the intraday on that. Um, yeah, we did, and yesterday we did as well. So we haven't been above 160 in months, literally since, um, let's see here, since, yeah, the middle of September. That's the last time we were above 160. So Apple's at a multi-month high. And one thing worth mentioning is we did not break the highs from yesterday. So keep that in mind. We do have a little bit of double top action right now, but really it's not the end of the world. It's, it's really not the end of the world as we did close at a higher low right here. And the bulls for all we know, guys, and mind you, we had a 0.7% day and the, a green day and the bulls for all we know could be gearing up for round two, which if we break out of the highs from yesterday and today, which are roughly at 162, that's where we could really start to explode uh, back to the upside, right? Which, I mean, we, we've been doing very well the past couple of weeks. So if you're a bull, you want to see the trend continue, you need to see this breakout of the highs from today, yesterday being 162 bucks. So Apple AAPL looking pretty good right now, especially if it could break out of that key level. And I'm sure you guys saw the news about Block Square. You guys know that company, Jack Dorsey's company. Well, they are under fire right now from Hindenburg Research, the investment firm, the short selling investment firm that writes these crazy reports. They do a ton of research, independent research, and these reports are like 60, 80, 100 pages, which we're not going to dive into in this video. I actually did make a TikTok about it, a three minute TikTok. Go check me out on TikTok, guys, at Stoss Talk Stocks. I also posted it on my Instagram, at Stoss Surfest, S T A S S E R F E S. Make sure you guys go follow me on Instagram because let's be honest, TikTok might get banned any at any point at this point, which we're not going to get into in this video, but that's neither here nor there. So Square got destroyed today and those that report claimed that Cash App, which is owned by Block, well, Square, e either way, whatever the heck the company's called, <laughs> um, they, they own Cash App, right? And Hindenburg Research is claiming that Cash App is essentially... There, there's a lot of fake accounts and there's a lot of fraudulent activity going on on Cash App. And it, essentially, it's an app that is used by criminals. And there's a lot of shady crap going on on there, which we're not going to get too deep into that in this video. But I think Hindenburg Research was saying that 40 to 75 percent of the accounts are fake on Cash App. That's a huge claim. I mean, th these are all claims, allegations. We don't know exactly what, what the truth is, but the markets heard that news 
And oh boy, did the stock get destroyed. Down 15% on the day, down about 11 bucks on the day. And it's at a multi-month low at this point. Square was actually doing pretty well throughout December into the new year, actually into the beginning of February. And now it's just in a in, in free fall mode, right? It's a falling knife. Again, we're at a multi-month low at this point, And we're approaching a support from back in... December, yeah, roughly 58, 60 bucks, which I'm not too convinced that that's going to hold after uh, after this report. And now let's say this report is a bunch of BS, which it could be, it, it could be false. This could be gearing up for a rally, but I don't think that's going to happen anytime soon here, guys, with this dark cloud over the company. It might be a, you know, a couple of weeks before we get another rally on Square, on Block. We don't know. Time will tell. And, and for me, for that reason, guys, I'm just watching the company. I'm tracking it. I'm tracking the stock, but I'm not looking to buy here. It's a, it's a falling knife. It's too fresh, too risky. The news is too fresh, and that could lead to more downside on blocks. So Apple, Square Block, whatever you want to call it, you got to watch out for those. And Netflix today had a very good day. NFLX is the ticker, if you guys didn't know. This one up over 9%. I forget. What was the catalyst on this today? Let me see here. Um, was there even a catalyst or did it just move? Says here, Netflix shares are trading higher following reports of a, of positive data, a positive data report from Yipit Data. I actually haven't heard of that. Um, so I guess that's what's moving the stock here. Maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Either way, it went up 9% on the day. And this is the moment of truth right now for the bulls. You guys remember we called out this head and shoulders a couple videos ago. I think I talked about it yesterday as well. And that head and shoulders, well... It's still intact. We're actually testing the neckline right now. I mean, we're getting to it right around 325, 330, 335. That is the neckline here on the head and shoulders, and that is where my alert's at. Now, if the bulls break out of that point, that's going to be great for the bulls. But we're not showing any signs of that yet, so I wouldn't get too excited. For all we know, this could be a sucker's rally. This could sucker in a lot of buyers, and then boom, this could whip right back down under 300 for all we know, guys. But today... Great day for Netflix. Phenomenal day for Netflix and a couple of Chinese stocks. Let's break these down. We had Tencent today go up a whopping 7%, which is pretty good considering this company is reporting earnings tomorrow. Or did they report already? Wait a second. It says they reported yesterday, but I'm not seeing the numbers here. Or maybe they pushed it back. Either way, guys, this thing, regardless of whether they report earnings or not, whatever, it went up 7% on the day. And the big thing here for the bulls is, number one, the stock's gapping above the moving averages on the four-hour chart. That's very good. You guys can see that right here, which we haven't been above these moving averages in a couple of months. And the second key thing here is we're taking the highs out from the beginning of this month, the beginning of March, which those highs were right around 47 bucks. So we're starting to break out here on Tencent, T-C-E-H-Y, and we're also confirming a bounce off this $43 level, which you guys can see that was resistance from the end of August, early September, and also from back in December. So bulls are coming in, guys. We're gapping up. Very good sign here on Tencent, a Chinese company. And JD.com is also doing pretty well today, although this unlike Tencent, is not looking that great on the charts. It's still, you know, it's still clearly in a downtrend. We have a death cross here, and, you know, it doesn't look like it wants to reverse anytime soon, but, hey, it had a 4% green day. Not too bad there for JD.com. We also had a couple other ones move. I mean, a lot of, a lot of stocks moved today, guys. We had SoFi go up. 3.9 at more like 4% on the day. It looks like this inverse head and shoulders we called out a week ago, I think, or recently, whatever, whenever that was. I make so many videos, guys. You know that. Make sure to subscribe. Hit that notification bell if you haven't done so already, guys. We can see so far the inverse head and shoulders is still intact. We have the left shoulder here, the head, the right shoulder. Now we're starting to break out of the 50 SMA. Maybe we start running towards six, the mid sixes. Time will tell, guys. So, so far is looking Decent inverse head and shoulders is still intact. And in terms of big tech today, guys, we already talked about Apple. The other big tech names today also did very well. We had Meta up 2.2% and just hit a fresh high of 207.88 today, guys. My goodness. And I think Meta just got upgraded recently. I forget what firm upgraded them. Either way, the stock is moving up towards that high now, I think from about a week ago, or not a week, a year ago, rather, which you can see here on the chart back in April of last year. Yep, we were at about 225, 235, that general range. Hey, 
call me crazy, but that's by the looks of it where this thing is looking to go. I think there could be more upside here on Meta by the looks of the chart on the yearly chart there. And of course, on the four hour chart, which is showing a complete breakout on the stock as we're above the moving averages. And now we're above the highs from last week and from a couple weeks ago. So Meta looks really good, guys. Google's also continuing this breakout above 103, which is very good. I mean, that's that's been resistance for quite some time. We've covered that here on the channel, guys. You can see from back in October into November, December, January, you name it, guys. We were struggling at 103. Now we're starting to break out of that on Google. That's a very good sign. Microsoft, let's see what that did today. Microsoft's looking like a cup and handle here. You guys see that? We got the cup, we got the handle. Looks like we're about to go test the highs from a couple days ago, being 280, 282. If that breaks, we could get more upside on Microsoft. What am I forgetting here? We talked about Apple, Meta, Google. Microsoft. What's the other one? Uh, Amazon, Amazon, Amazon. Let's see what Amazon ended up doing today. It actually broke even pretty much. It went up It went up a whopping penny on the day. Pretty good day, guys, for Amazon. When it's up a penny, it closed at $98.71. And we are consolidating now by the looks of it above the moving averages on the four-hour chart, which who knows how long that will last. Will it last I don't know. I mean, we'll see. Do we end up bouncing off these moving averages, starting to break back over, let's say, 101, 102, which would be great for the Bulls, or do we end up falling right through the moving averages under 95, which, honestly, I would I would want that so I, so I could buy more stock. That'd be great for the Bears uh, and for those that want to buy a long-term position or add to their long-term position, which I want to do that. Time will tell, guys. Time will tell. So I'll put my alert here. Maybe I'll do one at Mark is at or below um, let's see, it closed at 98.71 today. I'll put one at $97. Mark is at or below, and we'll see where it ends up going from that point. So we're about 13 minutes in here, guys. Let me see what other stocks we could talk about very quickly. How did the banks do today? FRC Regional Bank went down 6%. All right, not the best day at all, but obviously not as bad as we've seen from other days. Um, you know, we could see here Zion's Bank Corporation down 9%. WAL, which is Western Alliance, down 2%. How did the big boys do today? JP Morgan down a quarter percent. So it looks like today, was was kind of calm out there for the uh, for the banks, especially the uh, the big boys. By the looks of it, here on J.P. Morgan, let's see what Bank of America did. Bank of America down, all right, two point four percent. That was a pretty big drop down to a fresh low here on the four hour chart. Not a good sign at all for the bulls on Bank of America. Let's see Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo down one point six. So it looks like out of the big boys, J.P. Morgan is the only one that's holding up pretty strong. How did Morgan Stanley do? 2% in the red. All right. Citigroup down about 6 or 0.6% rather, not 6%. That'd be, that'd be abysmal guys. So banks are still hurting, still struggling as expected, which, which makes sense to me guys. What do you think down below? And again, all the big tech stocks did well today, you know, Netflix, Google, Amazon, Meta, you name it. And of course we had Square, we had Block, Coinbase, those did not do well. Let me actually pull up Coinbase, which went down 14% on the day, but it is consolidating right around the moving averages here, and we are fighting to hold a higher low at about 63 to about 65 bucks, which time will tell if we do actually bounce at this point and maybe start running back to the mid 70s, maybe 80 bucks. We'll see. So with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap up the video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, make sure to subscribe and don't forget to get up to 17 stocks for Moomoo. Link down below or you guys can go to stocksurfest.com slash Moomoo. Once you open up an account, you get one free share of stock. If you deposit at least 100 bucks, you get four more free shares plus two shares of either AI or BBAI. So right off the bat, if you deposit at least 100 bucks, Bucks, you're getting seven stocks and listen to this it gets better if you deposit at least a thousand bucks you get another 10 stocks totaling 17 free stocks so yeah if you want some free money you want to help out the channel use that Moomoo link down below and don't forget to join my patreon if you want to keep in touch with me throughout the day more one-on-one -on -one access you get access to my patreon portfolio and the discord chat right and you get all my charts throughout the day thoughts throughout the day on Patreon. That's linked down below. And with that being said, I'll catch you guys later. Stay safe out there. Peace out.